you know, I want to kind of start out by reminding you, I'm not a lawyer. I have no skin in the game. I, I don't get paid by the industry. And I, I, I know you're up in Canada. I may or may not be able to help you, but we've swapped emails. It's the first time we've talked or seen each other. So I'll do the very best I can, uh, Josh. But I think that your story from your emails sounds like something that people can relate to, you know, with whatever brand they've got. And yeah. my hope is that we can do something that can that can get some either some closure or uh, optimism for you, but yeah. to pass along some of your experiences that can be of value to others that may be going through the same thing. So, yeah, so that's, uh, you know, as I had said in the emails to you, um, you know, we're, we're locked in a stalemate here dealing with uh, with uh, Keystone and boy, oh, boy, is it ever frustrating. Um, it's can, almost can like. You Give 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 us the the background if you would. You know you you've sent me some of these notes, but this is a, a t tell us what you bought, when you bought it, was it new, et cetera, and let's just kind of encapsulate the story in a couple of minutes, and then we will dissect it to see where we're at today. Yeah, so uh, to give a brief background, you know we're a family of four, like you said, we're in uh, we're up in Canada, we're in Nova Scotia on the east coast of Canada, and uh, RVing is something we've done. I mean, I did it as a kid. Uh, I met my wife, you know, 15, 16 years ago. And it was one of these things I said, hey, at the time, uh, you know, we should try this and see if you like it. And uh, with her, with no experience, she said, yeah, for sure. Let's." Uh, so we started out, uh, you know, the first camping trip, the first few years was in a small towable uh, travel trailer, 21 foot. Um, you know, and the lifestyle is just something, you know, that's something I I can't play down. It's something that we just love, the, you know, the freedom and uh you know, the, the, the whole uh, process of being able to take a part of our home and uh, go hit the road. And, we, you know, we just loved it. Yeah. So we actually, we got engaged while on a, on a camping trip. We got married uh, while we were uh, camping, you know, and uh, I often joke, I said, geez, if the opportunity presents itself, she may divorce me while we're, uh, while we're camping. <laughs> but uh, anyway, no. So, you know, shortly thereafter, we had kids and we stepped up to a, uh, um, you know, like a travel trailer, a bunkhouse. And then uh, we got into the fifth wheels and, uh, you know, we had a bunkhouse fifth wheel. And then in 2017, you know, I, it was something we were spending out, you know, almost all our free time, our summer months were on the road. In uh, 2017, I spotted this Montana. It was a 2016. Uh, we're on our second Montana now, but I'll give you a brief rundown. So this was our exposure to the, you know, the self-proclaimed uh, luxury RV that they put out. Well, it must have been pretty good because you had one and you end up buying another, right? Or you could just say, I'm not very smart, Alan. What? <laughs> Pick your poison. Uh, no, so, yeah, well, so here's the thing. We bought our first one and we had some few issues. And, and uh, the thing with this unit, and I guess what I told myself, convinced myself of, was uh, it, it was a 2016. We bought it in 2017. It had sat on a lot for a year. Uh, new unit, um, and it had been to RV shows and this and that. And, um, I learned a lesson there. People in and out of that RV all the time, and you know, so I had a lot of uh, a lot of issues. Nothing big, I'll say. Uh, when I say when I refer to big issues, it's more in our newer Montana. But anyway, that was my first time dealing with Keystone, and um, they did at that point. The only dealing I had with them was, you know, the downtime. Well, the frustrating part was the downtime back. You know, we'd we'd quote in it, and then it would end up back at the dealership, and they're fixing yeah. leaks and electrical gremlins. And anyway, so they, uh, you know, they compensated us. I think it was something minor, the twenty five hundred bucks at the time for the downtime, and off we went. So yeah, so then we uh, twenty twenty, we were actually we were on the road with the unit, and uh, we were. Uh, you know, not far, a couple hours from here, and we there's a big RV dealership, and whoa, they had this brand new, uh, you know, 2020 full body paint legacy edition is what they, you know, so basically all the bells and whistles that you could get. And uh, at this time, you know, of course it was COVID, so uh, working from home, my wife um, works from home, so this was the floor plan that was just ideal for us. It had the, uh, you know, that mid. A bonus room, I think they call it the mid, you know, so she had an office essentially where she could go in and yeah, we're going to bring up a picture of it on the screen. You know, that that's a beautiful Keystone, Montana, beautiful fifth wheel. Yeah. You know, and I guess I fell for the, uh, you know, the, that full body paint grabbed me right away. And I thought, Hey, this is, this is it. So, uh, you know what? We bought the thing 
Um, and like I said, we were on the road. So they actually, uh, the dealership had to deliver it to us, uh, to an RV park that we were staying at. And, uh, yeah, so we, uh, we were, we were looking forward to it. I mean, now, did you get an inspection on that RV? So they do the PDI inspection, uh, where, um, the dealership goes over it. Um, but you did not get an independent third party. No. So this was before, like I said, I've been learning, uh, you know, every day. Um, if I had my yeah. time back, I would, uh, yeah, most definitely. But at the time, you know, I thought brand new unit. Um, this was kind of 20, this was July of 2020. So the whole COVID thing, you know, the deficiencies hadn't reared their ugly head yet mm -hmm. with the manufacturing process. And, um, so, uh, yeah, we, we, we set out with this thing and in the first year of ownership. So we, like I said, we got at the end of July. Uh, so we just had a couple of months. I mean, our, you know, I'll tell you right now, our season's a lot shorter than uh, yeah. we get basically May to October is our, is our camping season. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we put it to good use and uh, we had, we had minor issues, I'll say, um, you know, some things here, issues with the gray tank. We had, uh, I had to replace two power transfer switches, um, tail lights. Were these, were these warranty issues? This was all you... warranty. Yeah. Yep. So okay. I used, uh, I used the dealer, uh, Coltless when we bring it back home and we'd have these issues. Uh, I used the dealer that no longer had the Montana line. It's the, it's the dealership. I bought the original Montana from, uh, but they no longer had that line. So that's why I had to travel further away to find this Montana. Anyway, they would bring in parts and I would do the work. Um, okay. So stand by just a second. Let me see if I understand. This is your second Montana. Yeah. The, the first one you bought, you bought from this dealer. The second one you bought from this dealer. Yeah. The one you're having the issues with, you bought from this second dealer. Are they now out of business? No, nope, they're, they're still a very large dealer. Um, they've got four locations up here. But you took it back to the other dealer that you had bought the other one from? No, I never took it back. So I just went in for some, some things, you know, I said, you know, taillights that filled with water, right? I'm not going to haul this thing back to you. You know, I went in and, um, you know. I've, so, I've but you took it back to the selling dealer. That, that's what I'm, I'm trying to. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I took it back to our local. I didn't take it back, but I went back for warranty parts through our local. A dealer. different dealer. Okay. Got it. And it wasn't until down the road here in a few minutes, it was when we got, you know, we started dealing directly with the the purchasing, you know, where we purchased it from the dealership. Uh, they're about two and a half hour drive away from us. Yep. So all the minor stuff, I just went to our local, they were a Keystone dealer, so they could bring the parts in. And I did a lot of the stuff uh, myself. Anyway, it wasn't until the next, so the, we're talking the summer of 2021, we get the thing out. And if the, the original issue was actually something separate, but it was kind of opened up the can of worms was, uh, the pass-through storage doors, as well as this particular model, has a, like a little a small oak door kitchen. So it's essentially another, you know, one of these mm -hmm. uh, double-latched um, pass-through storage doors. So the, say there's three of them. These things were just waterlogged, just filled with water to the point that, I mean, they're heavy to operate. Um, I was worried with the kids being around them. I mean, these things come down. There's just the magnetic latches, you know, when you put them up and all that. Jesus, is this, this due to because the way you stored it over the winter time, or no? So my initial, uh, you know, diagnosis. I'm looking at it and I said, you know what? So it, I don't know what the process is when they, but from what I gather, when they when they take these things, they pluck them off the line at some point, and take them to the full the the paint booth to do the whole body paint, right. and then bring it back and it joins in on the assembly line and away it goes. Um, from what I gather is they didn't, when they put the, uh, the latches back in, it's got those slam latches, you know, the two of them on each door, they didn't seal them. Right. Mm -hmm. So rain, water, it went in and the door basically started filling from water and I'll send you some pictures. You can post them here, but you'll see like these things just got filled with water. And so anyway, this, is back that, this is something Josh that you could not have possibly known to even think about when you purchased it and it no. looked fine. So you just assumed in the PDI and at the manufacturing plant, they had done it the right way. Exactly. It okay. uh, was one of those things where something as simple as sealing door uh, handles, uh, you would think it would be done at the factory, but anyway, I took all six of them off uh, the three doors and lo and behold, they weren't, they weren't sealed. So I sealed them. But in the meantime, I've got these doors that weigh a ton and with right. kids around and it's, you know, if one of these comes down, it's like a guillotine, right? It's, it's so, <laughs> yeah. so I, I dug in and, and of course, uh, 
when you replace those doors on a full body paint unit, it's going to have to go back to the paint booth, right? Uh, it's not deckling. It's so that was a, that was an obstacle we had to overcome. And that's when I started dealing with Keystone and their customer relations. And I'm saying, guys, locally, we don't have a paint booth that this can fit in. Right. Um, mm. So it's going to cost a bit. I had taken to two, I towed it out to two different auto body places and they said, Oh, we can do it. We just have to take the, you know, the panel, the, put, put the doors on, do this color, take them right. off. Pinch. Anyway, that adds up. And uh, they said, no, we're not paying that. We'll give you a thousand bucks. And that's the only, uh, we won't give you a thousand bucks, but we'll, we'll offer to pay a thousand. Wow. So I said that anyway, so that battle went on for a while, and all the time we're, we're using the unit. And uh, on a separate issue, at the same time, I start seeing uh, uh, some cracking above one of the doors. And it's just below the, the forward bedroom slide out on the, the off door side, I guess they would, would call it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was a small crack to begin with. And uh, we were actually down in the States traveling, and I you know, took my Sharpie and made a little mark and we towed another couple hundred miles and it would grow and grow. And it was only, it was only spreading when it was under tow. So, um, I started mentioning this while I'm still dealing with these doors. And so anyway, they said, okay, well get it to the dealership that you bought it from and they'll work with us through their dealer or whatever. Uh, okay. Uh, so, I haul it in there and uh, the service manager, uh, she comes out and has a good look at it. And I, she's looking at the cracks, she's looking at the doors and then she says, you've got a little bigger issue than what, you, what you're seeing here. She said, uh, you've got a lot of water in the front of this unit. Uh, perfect, right? This is right. What so, um, and she said, uh, so we're not going to replace the doors or anything. This has got to go back to Indiana. This is out of our scope of work. They need to dig into it. I suspect there's an issue in the in the framing, whether it be the substructure, the aluminum sidewalls, or right. Okay, a couple of things. Couple couple of questions. What what month was this generally? Was this at you know the season's over? It's cold already, or so this was. Uh, um, this was in the spring of uh, this was in the spring of twenty. Three. So the summer of 22, we had to paint the water, right? And back and forth, nothing happens overnight. So we're battling this out. But now uh, it's out of warranty, right? Well, yes. But my claims were put in while it was under the warranty. The, the three-year structural warranty was still in play when when she noticed, she, you know, she said, you've got some bigger issues okay. here. Did they put this in writing? Did they put, do you have in writing, again, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm just thinking along the, the yeah. do you have a history, a written history of, at the dealer, they did this on this date. This is what they said. And you've got all that documentation. We've got it all documented, yes. Okay. Um, so they, they said, uh, so in the spring of 2023, she noticed you've got a lot of issues here. It's got to let, she says, leave it with me. I'll deal. It's got to go back to the factory. And uh, you know what? She's She's been a great, uh, a great assistance to us, the service manager. And anyway, my thing at the time was now I've got a unit going back to the factory. I'm paying for a unit that now I can't use for the summer. And they said, no, no, no. Keystone's agreed. You can use it for the summer. We'll take it back in the fall. Um, you know, they said, we don't. And how was the crack doing, Josh, at this the point? The crack was still growing. The crack was growing. And now it was starting to almost in that sidewall, kind of kind of delaminate or bulge. You know what I mean? Um, okay. And and we started really, you could, that, that bedroom slide would really labor when you would operate it in and out. And... So, you know, you, you know, something is, is wrong. And, you know, I kind of, at the time I thought, yeah, there's gotta be some broken welds in this, in the side wall or what have you. So we used it that summer and uh, uh, in the fall, I dropped it off. Uh, so it'd been a year ago, we dropped it off and um, they transport it back to Indiana. Uh, and this is, and they're, they are covering this under warranty because even though it's out of the warranty period, you had started the claim exactly. while it was still under warranty. That's correct. Yes. Okay. So now it's last year, last end of the summer, and yeah. it ends up going back to Indiana to Keystone. Yeah. So the warranty, so yeah, to simplify it, the warranty, when I took it in the spring of 2023, the structural warranty was still in play and it expired, I think August 1st or something was, so okay. it was out of the warranty when it went back to Indiana, but the, the 
it, like I said, we had negotiated that this is when it will happen for the season. It'll go back. And the warranty claim was submitted during while the warranty was still effective. So that's, that's right. How we got to where we're at. So it goes back to Indiana and it was there for the winter. Um, and you know, they would send updates and this and that. And of course I had a laundry list of other things. Um, so the unit came back to us uh, in April of this year. Um, this here is 12 pages of, of uh, 12 pages, 36 line items of, of discrepancies, issues that they uh, addressed. Oh, so, that, they, that they actually worked on there at Keystone. Yeah. So but the, the biggest issue was the crack. The biggest issue of all of it, I mean, was was this crack. And what uh, what had happened was when they got it back, the whole side wall had to come up. Slides had to come out on that side. There's three slides. The wall had to come off. And when they got into it, they found that the aluminum framing had in, around that bedroom slide had in, in, indeed failed. It cracked. Right. It broke. So... Uh, and I'll just, so, uh, you know, on their work order here, I'll just, I'll breeze through this quickly, but it went, they give you basically the issue, the cause, and then their corrective action. So it was the off door sidewall is delaminating above the compartment door. That is by the bedroom slide out. There is also a crack on the front lower corner of the off door side bedroom slide out opening. Okay. So the, the cause is the slide out opening tube had broken welds. So the aluminum structure around that slide out, the, the welds are right. So to correct it, they removed the whole sidewall of the unit, um, filled the three aluminum tubes with wood and added five, six inch screws for stability and flexibility. Five whole screws. Five whole screws. Okay. But, so, you know, hang, hang on just a second. Uh, so far, it sounds like you have, and, and, and I'm going to tell you, if I think that you've forgotten to do something or if you do something right, so far, I think you've done everything right. And the good thing, again, I'm not a lawyer, but it seems to me that, that this is the factory. This is a manufacturer. This is not the dealer. They can't blame it on somebody else. So there is a paper trail of, yeah. you know, the condition and they, did they turn around and try to blame it on you? You must've used it too, you know, rough or taking it off road or. No, no, they never, no, that was never, uh, uh, you know, suggested to us. Okay. Um, while this, like I said, they would send weekly updates. Uh, here's where your unit's at, you know, da, 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 da. And so, you know, I would respond with, um, uh, you know, starting to learn about this frame flex issue, I'm saying like, hey, how's the frame, <laughs> right? Right. Which they'd say, oh, we're going to have Lippert come in and inspect the frame and da, 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 da. Well, Lippert did come in and inspect the frame and they sent me a separate report, but all they talk about, and I mean, it's to me, it was cracked oat riggers at the rear of the unit on both sides. Um, and they replaced those and added tubing and da, da 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 and so there was nothing said about you know the, the front of the unit where the the, the biggest issue was presented right. so I, I said okay um no they said that's it's just uh the side wall uh the aluminum structure cracked and uh anyway so, so, okay. And, and I'm not trying to, to, to push you here and I'm really good at interrupting. I apologize for that, oh. but just to, for the sake of time, this is this year. Now, this is this year, yes. 2024. Yes. And so you, did you have to go back down to pick it up? Did they deliver it back to Canada? What? No, they delivered it right back to the dealership. Um, okay. So. And and was everything fixed? Well, yeah. So they before. So th I guess the process was before they ship it back, they send you this this total work order. Yeah. And they say go through it, and we'll call you in a week, and we'll discuss. You know, if you have any questions. Well, I'll, I had lots of questions. You know, some stuff I just you know, the yeah. RV lingo, and, and I. But, so they explain a lot of it, and I was I was skeptical because I said, okay, send it back. But what do I, because of the warranty, I said, but what do I have for warranty? That was my big thing. What like, and they're, th we'll give you six months warranty on all repairs done at this factory visit. So, 
okay, send it back to me. So it comes back to me and uh, I drive up uh, and pick it up. And um, I wasn't impressed well, with the, the, the stuff I could see, the quality of work. Right. I mean, yeah, they replaced the full side and painted it, but uh, the thing was covered, both sides covered in overspray and, you know what I mean, rubbing your hands on it was like rubbing sandpaper, right? It was just that they, they didn't. Anyway, so like I said, I was really, so then I dug in, okay, if this is what I'm seeing on the surface, what kind of work do they do? Right. Um, but hey, I can't see the work they did in, in between the walls. So so I, you go out and you use it, right? I mean, you hit it. it up, let's go camping. Let's go. So uh, July, we hit the road, you know, our kids are young. So when they get out of school, like that's it, we're on the road and, right. and uh, we're not back until school goes back in in the fall. So we head out and it was about mid July, we were on the road and uh, we, we stop at our destination and I open up the front slide and as soon as I go up to the bedroom, whoa, there's a big crack in the interior wall. Okay. A crack that goes from the slide, you know, where the bed slides out the slide to the floor. And uh, it just happens to be in the exact same spot that the crack was on the exterior the year before. Now, part of the repair, when they did the repair, they all they put an expansion joint on the outside you know there's that strip of uh -huh. rubber molding so there's an expansion joint where that crack was originally which was not there before um to cover everything up <laughs> you know, putting lipstick on a pig yeah so now this crack is on the exact same spot but on the inside of the unit so right off the, uh, i you know an email goes out to uh to the representative that I had dealt with through its whole process when it was in uh, in Indiana. Yep. Hey, we got a problem here, right? And uh, explained it, and they said you got to get it to a dealer for them to look at it, right? And so I said, yeah. Well, just so happens, or the dealer that I bought it from is not that far away. I'll uh, load it up tomorrow, and I'll go in and take. So I took it in and saw that uh, service manager, and she's been great. She she met me as soon as I pulled in, and she said you've got a frame issue right and i said yeah i'm aware i've had one for a long time now right right and uh so she uh she said you got to leave it with me i have to do a flex test so i left it and uh came back a couple hours later and she said yeah it failed the you know the measurements that it has to be within uh, she said so it, so anyway she said, keep using it. And I mean, we have no choice for basically living in it. Do you have documentation that you had taken it in then? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I've got a whole binder here full of emails back and forth. And uh, Okay. So, so you've got another issue, the, uh, uh, the recurring issue, I guess. Yeah. Okay. What does Keystone say? So I suggest in one of my emails, I say the frame is cracked. Well, it very well could be. And I said, you know, you, I thought you guys addressed this. Your repair has failed. No, 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 no. There was no frame issue when it was here. And I said, well, I think there was. I said, you know, why did the side, the aluminum crack in the first place? I think it was, you know, the frame is flexing and the aluminum was is weaker than the steel and the aluminum welds broke. And But the root cause, I feel, is the frame was flexing all along. And now we've got the frame that's broken, right? Right. And no, was no. the frame actually broken, Josh? I mean, that, that so so back and forth. The, the, the right away they said it has to come back to Indiana. I said, hang on here. Uh, I'm not just it's not just going back to Indiana and you know, for a second time. Yeah, let's talk about this. Let's you know let's use some common sense, which is yeah, it's hard to come by. Uh, so it says okay. They said so you know we've brought into the dealer and then we've gone back to doing our camping thing and then they say okay. Now we need it to go back. They have to remove that. We want the dealership to remove that phylon uh, to do a, a deep inspection, we'll say, of that upper deck, the welds, you know, from that upper deck. Uh, so I said, okay, that's what we'll do. So pack it up and bring it back into them. And uh, she she says, uh, the service manager says, like, I, this is gonna, I'm going to need a few days um, and uh, we'll, we'll do it. But she said, I don't think it's good based on the measurements. So they do that. And um, to quote her, she called me right after and she said, we did. She said, I have never heard 
a sound like that. The, the, you know, when they lift it with the forklift and do there, they've got, I think she said they have four individuals on it, one inside in the forward closet, you know, with listening and one guy on the forklift and two guys in the, uh, that front section. She said the sound, the cracking, the, 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 the God awful sound that came from your unit. When we lift it up and put it back down, she said, we all stepped back and thought, you know, yeah, man. what's happening. This is bad. So, that's where the battle really starts going back and forth, uh, you know, and uh, the unit has been sitting at the dealership ever since then. Cause um, you know, I asked outright, I asked in one of my emails to Keystone, I said, should I be telling this? And they said, based on what we have now, you should not be using it. So we scrapped our summer. We had you know, a full summer of plans and it's been sitting there since. So now your camping season's over. It's winter time. You know, I mean, it's, yeah. The next yeah. several months. So, so okay. Again, I'm no lawyer, but it sounds like you did everything right. It sounds like what what to me, it looks like they have sold a product that was kind of just slapped together, if you will. Yeah. And they're they they're trying to kick it down the road and hope that you'll just accept this inferior product and you know yeah. wash their hands of it. That's the way it looks like to me. Yeah. What have you done? I thought one of your emails, didn't you say that they had offered you a cash settlement or something? No, not a cash. So, um, like I said, the battle began back and forth of what we're doing with this unit. Um, between you and Keystone, not with the dealer. Yes, this is between Keystone. And, and so initially, uh, when I first sent that first emails and the first few emails saying, hey, we got an issue here. Their response was, we got to get it back to Indiana. And uh, <laughs> right. And there was a few things that place said, no, we're, we're, we're in the unit right now. Um, you know, the second thing, you guys just had the units and attempted a repair and I'm, they swore right from, no, no, it's, it's, it has nothing. It's totally different. It just happened to be in the same place, the, the crack, right. But it's a totally different issue. Right. Um, and then they got on there. Well, but you know, your units out of, uh, out of a warranty. I said, no, 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 hang on. You guys, I have six months on the repairs that were done it did, oh but this this was a totally it's separate. a separate repair they're so, it is, yeah i mean everything they could throw at you they throw at you right and right. common sense goes out the window and, and then of course that's when i start my frustration builds and so we're back and forth so it wasn't until and getting to your point what it, it wasn't until the, the deeper inspection was done where she heard those god awful noises and and you know she reported that back she said that you know I, I sent that right back to keystone and it was days later that they came back and said you know what considering the history of your unit keystone would like to uh well first they say you know you have no warranty blah blah blah, blah. but keystone would like to do you a favor and get you in a new unit right of course so, okay well this is you know at the time when, considering what we were being i thought Hey, this, this is a step in the right direction until, so then they hand you on to a different division, um, um, warranty sales or whatever. Anyway, so this, uh, this separate lady contacts me and she says, yeah, no, we're, we're going to get you in a new unit, a 2025 floor plan. Uh, and she said, so we want your unit plus $20,000 us plus you're responsible for, you know, getting it in and up. So anyway, in Canadian dollars, thirty-eight thousand dollars. That's with the exchange, the taxes on the difference, uh, getting it here, right? So you want my unit plus thirty-eight thousand dollars to get a brand new twenty twenty-five. Yeah. yeah. In that moment, I'm saying, no, I'm not. I've had two Montanas now. They've both given me issues. I've now got this issue. And you want me to get get me into another one and throw money at it. So nothing out of your pocket, right? Just we'll take your unit and they're going to take it back and repair it and sell it, right? And and I just oh, I Lord. couldn't it I, I don't have it in me to throw more money at this problem, right? I just don't. That's just where I'm at with it. Okay. Um. Um. You know what? Did they make the offer to you, Josh, in writing? Did they yes. write this down? Yeah, they did. Yeah. And so what was your response? I understand that you had, you know, you were, had your reservations about saying yes. And what yeah. happened? So you I, you know, we, I said, leave it with my wife and I, we're going to talk about it. And then I got back to them and said, 
we this we're, we're not interested. We appreciate your offer, and he, but I said I don't feel that uh, you know we bought this thing in 2020, thinking we'd have it for many years. We didn't plan to be replacing it, uh, uh, you know, this soon and, and, and throwing money at a problem that uh, you know this issue wasn't something that we created. This was something from you know the beginning, the the, the build process, the faulty okay. frame of this, right? And so then they said, I said, so, you know, like, let's find compromise here. Let's, and they said, it's that, or we take it back and repair it. And I said, well, hang on a second. I thought we were past the repair part. I thought it was considering the history of the unit and the findings on its inspection. This was, this was uh, no longer in the cards to, to, to repair this thing. So that's the only two options. And I've gone back. I said, listen, I've, uh, thanks to our friends on YouTube. I'm uh, learning a lot about this. And I said, so I I know for a fact that seven of these units have been bought back. Can we entertain a buyback? No. No way. They're not going to why, why not? Well, your scenario doesn't warrant a buyback. What's the criteria for a buyback? Case by case. Okay, can you just tell me why my case, what, what, what makes my case, you know, like, uh, no. Here's your two options. This is what Keystone stands by. And, you know, I just said, hey, listen, I can't. Knowing what I know, I can't. So so you want me to give you my unit back, take on a new unit, which would be fancy. And, you know, it would be brand spanking new. But <laughs> your quality of builds is not great. I'll be damned if in four years time I'm faced with issues with the new 2025 Montana thinking, what happened to the last one? Oh yeah, I threw uh, forty grand at it. To, so, uh, so what did you want? I mean, did you specifically say no? Without, I'm not saying that you, that you didn't have valid reasons and to you know your concerns. Did you say no? This is what I want. Was it yeah. the buyback? That was the only thing that was going to make you happy. So yeah, said, I, you come up with thirty eight grand. We'll give you a new Montana and we'll call it a day. Yeah. Or bring it back and we'll try again and we may even give you another six month warranty and it's just keep this thing kicking down the road. That's that, that, and it's, and you said, no, I want to buy back. And so that's where the, that's where the stalemate came. Yeah. Well, no. So I said, uh, you know, if you want to give me a new Montana, Hey, I'll take it, but I am not taking money out of my pocket to, you know, I, I just, and, and you know, 38 grand, I'm not, I can't justify throwing that much money. Okay. Knowing that, you know, will I be further ahead? Yeah, maybe for a few months, but you'll you definitely know. be out 38 grand, but you'll also have a new RV that you don't know. And I, I understand not having faith in it. So where have you left it? Where Where is it today in October? So that's, I, I've said, you know, like there's got to be some compromise. There has to be some, I can't justify that. I mean, um, the repair I thought was out of now, the repair is back in the question because I won't, you know, um, uh, I won't, you know, take you up on your offer as it stands. So uh, as it stands, we're just back and forth and, you know, I'm forced to, uh, to dig in and uh, see what, you know, what my options, other options might be. Uh, you know, I've got uh, a lawyer last week. I made a call, you know, the initial call to uh, a law firm. Uh, I had originally reached out to um, um, Ron, Burge, uh, because he's uh, he can't uh, take on a Canadian uh, suit, so I'm forced to find someone one in, in Canada. Um, and I guess there's so many avenues I could go down with this, but I, uh, the overall process. I mean, Keystone is playing. You know, they're playing hardball, and I get it. I'm just a stack of a file on a desk of I don't know how many. I mean, it sounds like you know these frame flex issues are are becoming more and more common. Um, but it, I mean, the, the, the unit sits at the dealership, we continue to pay for it. Um, it's unusable. And, uh, like I said, we're at a stalemate. Um, I don't know. I just can't, uh, I okay. just can't justify it. Okay. First off, thank you for thinking about me and reaching out to me. And I promised you that I will be honest and I will yeah. tell you what I think. 
and I'm not trying to make you a, a friend or an enemy. I'm just trying to like, we're having a beer together and you're, yep. you know, I'm just giving you my perspective. I think that the $38,000 is about the best you're going to get. I know you don't want to hear that, Josh. Here's the deal. A lawyer, I, there's nothing in this for me. I mean, I'll make pennies yeah. on whatever views yeah, yeah. that you and I get on. There's not that I have no incentive one way or the other, except to tell you the truth. Lawyers want your money. That's yeah. how they get paid. You know, bookkeepers, lawyers, plumbers, everybody wants your money. If there's any financial incentive, they're going to, most of the time, they're going to tell you what it takes to lead you into writing a check. Yeah. To me, you have spent enough time emotionally, financially, uh, worried wise. You seem like a like a straight up guy who's got all the documentation. You've done everything right. You've got a nice dealer. My thought at this point, unless there's something I'm completely missing, is that I know 38 grand is a lot. Is there can they work on the 38? Can they work on the little bit of money? Can they yeah. give you a longer extended warranty? Can they? Uh, is there anything that they can do to buy that confidence? The other thing is, are they going to ask you to sign an NDA? So this video, uh, while you're not trashing them, you know, and it looks like they're trying to work with you, they can't work with everybody. Not every, you know, not, not every frame's going to break, and th th this does sound like kind of a unique situation. But there's a lot more we're hearing about. It, it seems like every month. Mm -hmm. So. Is there any negotiating room? Is there any possibility to go, you know what? Uh, it's not the best thing, but it's the, the greater of two evils. You know, people, we got a presidential election coming. Well, I don't love so-and-so and I don't, well, it, it's the, which one is going to be the less bad. Yeah. And if you want to sit there and have your uh, expensive hundred plus thousand dollar Keystone Montana that you can't use because you won, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? It's, yeah. Yeah, no, and 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 um, and that's why I went back and I was, you know, like I said, to the, my response to them was, "There's got to be some compromise here. I can't, you know, hear me out, right?" Um, and uh, it, I guess there's not going to be, right? Um, and to me, it's just so frustrating what you, what you know, what I'm paying for, what you're getting. I mean. Uh, I've got a lot of issues. The more, like I said, I'm learning every day about this industry and I just keep shaking my head. Okay. Um, here's, an, here's another option. Does it have to be a Keystone Montana? You know, they got under yeah. that umbrella, they got a lot of different brands. Perhaps, yeah. perhaps you could get a smaller fifth wheel, something that isn't quite as fancy as, as what you had, what you thought you were going to be buying yeah. and have no cash out of pocket. Because yeah, and that's something I would like to see if they would come back. Um, they, from what I gather, that's a different division and da da da. I mean, I'll have it to is. It but but if you will go away and part of the settlement will, if they say yes right. to anything, if you go here, here's thirty eight grand, give me my new Montana. They're probably going to say, okay, you got to shut up and tell that guy to take the video off, and I'll, I'll do that. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But I think maybe. Your dealer sounds like you've got a good relationship with your dealer. And if you go in and explain to them, and you probably, it won't take long because they've probably been involved in this whole deal. They may say, well, you know what? You can't get the Montana. You can get the such and such if you know yeah. the manufacturer is willing to, to make some adjustments and yeah. tell them what you want. Because if you don't tell them what you want specifically, yeah. they don't care about the reason. They don't want a no. story. What does he want? And I have tried to get the, uh, so like I said, I can't say enough about this, uh, this dealership, the service manager is mm -hmm. been first class. I mean, she's, she's bent over backwards for us. She's gone to bat and told, you know, Keystone, Hey, we got to do something for these people. Uh, the sales side of that dealership is a bit different. Um, I'm not having good luck there. And I've gone to them and said, Hey, uh, you know, can you guys, you know, will you, will you, you know, you're kind of the middleman. Will you, vouch for the customer i mean uh, we've had a few rvs we like the rv lifestyle we, Josh, right? it's there's no money in it for the dealer and, exactly. and it's you know there's the truth and the ugly truth and the ugly truths can sometimes be ugly and we don't want to face it you know we want to hope that people do the right thing because it's the right thing yeah but for most human beings it's the right thing if it benefits them 
And I think that the service manager sounds like to me, they're doing the right thing. Keystone is probably not going to make any money. I mean, yeah. what, whatever they end up doing is a wash, but it's cheaper than having you go on, you know, the internet and rant, maybe go to a local news station, go, yeah. you know, you could file a lawsuit of probably, I don't know. If, um, what, what province are you in? Nova Scotia. So you got in Canada, we don't have the lemon law, right? No, I know that, but you do have small claims court, but yeah. you know, if you go and you win $20,000, big whoop, you got, you sitting on it and you probably would. I think you would probably win. If you go to small claims court, there's no way Keystone is going to, I don't think going to send a lawyer all the way up to Nova Scotia to yeah. defend all the pictures and things you've got, but there are maximum limits in small claims court. So yeah. you could get a nice fat check. So what? You got a piece of crap you can't use. Right. Is that a victory that you want to have? No. And, and I guess, you know, like and I said to my wife, I said, I don't know. I don't think we're going to come out on top with this, uh, you know, our argument. Um, they've made their offer and I, and I don't know where or what, you know, uh, where this will settle. Um, but the the other part to this is, and, you know, through watching your videos and all the I, I I feel like I have to help you know raise awareness because this is this is just gone on you know this whole frame flex uh, there's never been a recall on these frames you know like just the whole idea the whole you know I, I mean I could spend time reading through emails here uh, you know where they say there's been no frame flex uh, there was no uh, what does it say here? It is evident that the unit was not showing any signs of frame flex while the coach was here last fall. But on their work order, uh, when it gets into the slide out, when they rebuilt the slide out in the Schwinn Tech system, that front bedroom yeah. cause uh, the slide out uh, Schwinn Tech mechanism was broken due to frame flex. So I, I, I know. What you're saying, I hear what you're saying, and I'm not trying to be ugly or argumentative. No, 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 no. I'm don't. trying to be like a friend, going, "Look, a lawyer's going to take your money. They'll write some nasty letters, and they'll probably get, and guess what? Uh, Keystone will probably write some nasty response letters, and then guess what? You're going to write another check to lawyer to respond to the response, and you're going to keep digging yourself into this hole. And I know you don't want to hear that. No, but, no, no. <laughs> and I know there there are other people out there. What would you advise in retrospect? What do you wish you would have undif done differently besides purchase your Keystone Montana? I mean, it, it, it sounds like you did everything right. You still got a lemon. I would have found a different hobby, I guess, this if I had my time back. If I knew what I know now, I, will, I mean, I just can't believe. I mean, and that's why, I, you know, at the beginning of our chat here, I try and talk up, the, you know, the lifestyle. And I get it. And people... You know, I, I watch the YouTube people that vlog and they sell, you know, young couples, they work remotely, they sell their homes and away they go in an RV. And I'm thinking, oh, boy, I would not sell off everything and buy one of these things that are, you know, I thought I was buying a high end unit. I was buying high end problems is what I was getting. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I just it's a real shame what this industry is putting out, what they're getting away with. Um, and. You know, if, if anybody will listen to me, that's the message I'm going to tell them. Learn from my mistakes. I'm the dummy that bought two Montanas. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, you know, I ask the question, what does it feel like? What does a mistake feel like? And people say, well, it doesn't feel good. Then why did you do it? Because we don't know. No, I know. I know. But that's why I say with my experience now, I I, I have to share my story. Um, yeah. I just can't believe that, uh, you know, I... I and, and you're you're probably not going to like me for saying this either, but I promise you, your service manager at that dealership, you should go take him a box of donuts or something because you are being helped far more than most yeah. people are. You've got it. What what year is your Montana? Twenty twenty. Yeah. A twenty twenty RV, and the salesman or the service manager is still working with you closely and empathetic. Yeah and been your liaison with the manufacturer. And I think they deserve some props. I mean, even oh, though no, they do. And that's, uh, like I said, I, I can't say enough about her. And I've, uh, you know, there's been bottles of wine on her desk and then, uh, you know, I'm trying to, uh, she has been, you know, I know what's out there. I have dealt with other dealerships and, and she has just been fabulous. Yeah. But 
Well, here, here to kind of wrap this thing up, what my suggestion is, I, I don't believe in burning bridges unless you have to. And if you have to, you blow it up to a never go back. I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. Don't yeah. burn bridges. Keep your options open. Try to be a gentleman. Don't be a doormat. But I think that you're getting to the about the end of the road. Yeah. You know, you've got uh, you got a long winter ahead of you, so you're not going to be able to camp anyway. But now might be a, a time when you can get uh, maybe Keystone to agree to something in writing that you don't have to pull the trigger on today. You can see how you want to spend that money uh, over you know the winter months. The truth is the inventory out there, the dealer inventory and manufacturer inventory is way high. They yeah. have the units. Mm -hmm. They they don't want to carry any more inventory than they have to. And so maybe if you get some kind of a, a in writing settlement that you can use almost like a, like a gift certificate, so to speak, that let them keep the RV. You're sitting there and you can negotiate your own deal and try to get them to work with the dealer where the dealer can get a little bit. If the dealer doesn't make money, you don't want that because if you have a problem in the future, the dealer isn't going to work with you. Yeah. It, it's, no, no. Keep your options open. You yeah. don't have to pull the trigger right now, but don't spit in their face because I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I mean, that's why I'm in this situation. That's why you know, I appreciate you taking the time to give me your opinion. And uh, I, I, I mean, based on what I'm seeing, I, I get a new Montana, whether, you know, if I throw money at it or not, I don't, I don't have a lot of faith in these things. I don't think like, what do you, do you think things are built better now from in, in 2020, in this 2025 unit, as opposed to a 2020? Actually, I do. Actually, I, I, I truly do. Now, really? I, I really do because they're not making nearly as many of them. During the pandemic, they were cranking them out and these people on the line are just, and it's every brand, every single brand out there, every brand. Forest River, uh, uh, anything under Forest River, Winnebago, Thor, every one of them was doing inferior work because yeah. they were they, they were making piles of money. Uh, are they perfect? No, they're not perfect. But I think that the lemons, that it's a rare thing that somebody gets, quote unquote, a problem like you got. Yeah. And if I were in that situation, while I wouldn't want to reach into my pocket and pull out, you know, 38,000 Canada to, to buy another one. If I love camping and RVing and we enjoy the lifestyle, I'd like to put this nightmare behind me. I think, depending upon your financial situation, otherwise, mm -hmm. I would be very skeptical of everybody that you talk to that wants a little bit of this because they all yeah. want your money. Yeah. 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 No, uh, it'll be a tough pill to swallow. Um, I know it will. But, uh, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's just frustrating. I can't believe that, uh, you know, uh, that what they get away with. I mean, there's got to be more, there's, there needs to be more regulatory involved. To, you know, I always say, I was like, well, imagine if you had a boat, you know, uh, in the Marine business, building boats that uh, the fiberglass hulls are known to crack, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, would that, how, you know, that you would think that they'd be coming down on them and they'd be recalling units, but these, uh, and I'm not talking about a recall for a microwave or, you know, I'm talking about the frame of the thing, right? Right. The backbone right. of the unit. They're failing. And they knew they were failing. Yeah. And I mean, well, I mean, you're right. The industry does have issues. They know it. I think that behind the scenes, uh, they're going, what are we going to do? But, yeah. but the, the fact that they're in a depression right now, that they won't call it a depression. That's my term. I think that the RV industry is in a depression doesn't help matters that they're going to solve things because what they have to do is slow down, do a better job on the assembly line, do a better job of, of the PDIs at the dealership. You know, when they do make a repair, like you said that they had repainted overspray all over the side of your damn fifth wheel, you spent a hundred and something thousand dollars on it. That's just stupid. I mean, that's slop. So yeah. there's so many things they have to do, but in the meantime, they're trying to financially survive. I know it's hard hard to believe a billion dollar company is going. You know, we have to fight to survive, but they do. They're trying to keep those stock prices from cratering, keep them up. Yeah. Yeah. No. It, it, like I said, it's frustrating, and I, 
I'm convinced that, you know, uh, a prerequisite for, you know, RV quality control inspector is you need to be blind, right? They won't hire you unless you're blind because the stuff that these things are coming out with, I mean, it's. And the next time you bought one or you yeah. buy one, you going to get an independent third party inspection or what? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've learned a lot. There's going to be some changes, but I'm to the point now, I, I don't know if I want one. Right. After this experience, it, it's just. Yeah. Well, that's a shame. Thank you so much for thinking about me, Josh. And I, I hope some of this helped. I'm not trying to give you. No. You know, no. You know, I, I, I heard Paul Harvey one time. You probably don't even know who Paul Harvey was, but a brilliant, wise man. And he said he had a saying that false hope is always better than no hope. Yeah. And I don't believe in false hope. I want to try to tell the truth. And it, sometimes it is painful. I, like I said, I think you guys have done things right. And you need to, you know, don't blow up that bridge. Don't burn no, that bridge. No, no. No. And I think, you know what? Uh, it's great that, you know, you're doing what you're doing. Uh, continue raising awareness uh, because that's what I feel. I mean, that's what. You know, a lot of people fall, they, they show up on the lot and they see the bells and whistles and they fall for the, the glamour of it. But, yep. you know, well, I, th I think you did a good job in telling your story. I wish you the very best and please stay in touch with me. OK, yeah, no, for sure. I'll let you know how all things unfold and uh, and yeah, maybe we'll have another chat down the road.